there's a lot of issues with the monkeys right now, and I could break them up into three. One is the hunter's view, the farmer's local view, and then how we could coexist with them. And then there's sort of like, before all of that, we need to sort of understand what, where the monkeys came from and what, they, what benefits they have. And then at the very end, it's like find out and talk about solutions, how we can work with coexisting with them and just working with them. So that's how I've kind of like wanted to sort of frame it in my head. So I have here like, um, basically monkeys have been around since colonization. They're our only real, um, our main, our only main wildlife, other than birds and a few reptiles, the odd mongoose that you'll see, the only sort of wild animal we have are monkeys. And um, so this is, I think it's something, and we, it's something we have to think about, we have to coexist with them. Thinking the idea that we have to eradicate them is uh, pretty, uh, or even culling them. Because I'll give you, in my little thing, I'm gonna give you a definition of culling. And culling comes down to, it's where you actually take out the weakest and the, um, the sick, the old, and the very young as well. There's an actual scientific, it's not just coming there and shooting. And also, um, in particular with monkeys, they're not like herds of like deer or badgers. They have a complex social um, system like humans. So when you start taking out males and females, the alphas, you're actually changing the whole dynamics of the, of the troop. And when you change the total dynamics of the troop, yes, they might move away from where you've hit them here, but they become someone else's problem and then they start to behave differently. Because we have also what we call, and we're now recognizing that there is trauma, generational trauma. Well, monkeys experience the same thing when you get, you'll notice in areas that are high shoot areas. I'll give you an example, a friend of mine, she's been a farmer for over 20 something years. And when she first was, first was um, doing farming, I said to her, what are you doing to monkeys? And I said to her, look, whatever waste food you have put in the far, furthest corner, um, the monkeys have picked through. And she's never had an issue with monkeys. They used to do that. She said, I don't look at them, they don't look at me. They take what they want and move on. Recently, I've been asking her, how are the monkeys? She says, oh girl, these monkeys giving me bare grief. They, their personalities have completely changed. They are now far more aggressive, more bold. And she says, they're now coming to the, they're just destructively coming to the, the um, they don't look at the food anymore that they put out. They actually just come and destroy the greenhouses. But she said, that it's a high shoot area. I mean, you're hearing a regular here, packs, packs, packs of, of shooting and then the monkeys will disappear for a while and then they'll come back. And she says over the over 20 something years, she's noticed a distinct difference in the behavior of monkeys. So um, one, of the, one of the arguments I will use is that, yes, in some areas you might have to do it. You have to know what you're doing, but when you just randomly you're shooting a few monkeys, you're actually causing more problems in the future than you're actually solving right now. So I think that's something that the government has to look at in terms of like giving more bounties for people to shoot the monkeys. That also gives a license for other people to shoot monkeys, whether or not the government is legal or not legal. So you see to me, it's, it's a culture behind that's uh, I find dangerous and not really proven. We've been shooting monkeys for hundreds of years and it's not really done it's not been efficient and it's actually creating problems.